Hi, this is a nice question to practice if you want revision on vectors, velocity vectors, acceleration vectors, and force vectors. So what we've got here is a particle P of mass 0.4 kilograms moves under the action of a single force F newtons. And we're told that the acceleration of P then is 6i plus hj meters per second per second. And we've got three parts to this question, A, B, and C. And in the first part, we've got to find the angle between the acceleration and the vector i. So how would I go about something like this? Well, first of all, I need to set up my unit vectors i and j. And I'm going to take i as being horizontal and my j vector as being vertical. Now. I'm also going to want to draw a sketch. So we'll have our particle say here. Remember its mass is 0 0.4 kilograms. And we've got an acceleration that acts on the particle P. We even mark that as particle P as well. Okay, we'll just put that as P. We've got this acceleration vector with component 6i plus 8j. So we're going to have six units to the right, followed by eight units up. And so therefore we're going to have a vector A, something like that. It's not really totally drawn to scale, but hopefully that gives you an idea. So there's my vector A. I'm going to do a little squiggly line underneath the vector because I can't write it in bold. And we've got our components, so we'll just mark those in. We've got, this is six units here and we've got eight units up there. So we've got to find then the angle between the acceleration and the vector i. And that angle is going to be this one in here, which I'm going to name theta. OK, so we've got a right angle triangle here, so I can use basic trigonometry. I've got the opposite side. The eight is the opposite side to theta. The six is the adjacent side to theta. So that's going to be the tan of angle theta, which compares the opposite with the adjacent. So what we've got then is that the acceleration vector is equal to 6i plus 8j. We therefore know that the tan of angle theta compares the opposite side, 8, over the adjacent side, 6. And to work out theta, we just do the inverse tan of both sides. So we get theta equals the inverse tan then of 8 sixths. Work this out in your calculator. If you're in degrees mode, then you'll find you'll get 53.1301 and so on. And if we round this to say three significant figures, it's going to come to 53.1 degrees to 3SF. Okay, so that's part A. So we'll just border that off and we'll move on now to part B. Now in part B we're told to find now the magnitude of that constant force F. So we've got a constant force F acting on our particle P of mass 0 0.4 kilograms. And to do this we should be familiar with the fact that force equals mass times acceleration. But we're dealing with vectors here, so it's the vector f equals the mass, which is a scalar, multiplied by the vector a. So to get f then, all I've got to do then is to say that therefore f must equal the mass, which we know is 0.4 kilograms, 0.4 then, multiplied by our acceleration vector, which is 6i plus 8j. So we've got 6i plus 8j. And if we expand this out, we're going to get 0.4 times the 6, which is going to give us 2.4i. And then 0.4 times the 8j, that's going to be plus 3.2j. Now, it does say the magnitude of the force F. So to get the magnitude, it's going to be a triangle 
where we're going to need to use Pythagoras' theorem. So the magnitude of f, you could just leave it as, say, simply f like that without doing a squiggle underneath there. Or if you're going to use the vector f, then you should put two lines down the side like that to represent the magnitude. And so this by Pythagoras' theorem is going to be the square root of the sum of the squares of the two components. So that would be 2.4 squared plus 3.2 squared. And if you work this out, you find you get exactly 4. And don't forget the units, it's measured in newtons. So a force then of 4 newtons. Now we move on to the third and final part, part C. So how are we going to do part C? Well we're told that at time t seconds the velocity of p is v meters per second. And we're given that when t equals 0, v equals 9i minus 10j. And we've got to find the velocity of p when t equals 5. So in order to do this one, what we turn to is the formula which you should be familiar with, that is v equals u plus at. And again, we're dealing with vectors here. v is the final velocity, u is the initial velocity, and a is the acceleration, and t is the time. So if we're trying to work out v then, the final velocity, it equals u, the initial velocity, which is in fact this value here. So I know it's got a v there, but we're treating it like it were u. So that's 9i then minus 10j. And then we've got plus a times t. I'm going to put t first though. t is 5, so we're going to have 5 times the acceleration vector, which we know is 6i plus 8j. So it's just a question of expanding the bracket. We've got 9i minus 10j. And if we expand the bracket, we've got 30i. And then 5 times the 8 is going to give me plus 40j. Group the i's together. So you've got 9i plus 30i is 39i. Group the j's together and you've got minus ti not, look. Group the j's together and you've got minus 10j plus 40j, which is plus 30j. Now it does say find the velocity of p, not the speed of p. If it were to say find the speed of p, then I'd need to go on and work out the magnitude of this velocity by using Pythagoras' theorem, which would be the square root of 39 squared plus 30 squared. But no, it says find the velocity of p, so that's where it stops. I'm going to write this in brackets though and put the units as meters per second. Okay, well I hope that's given you an idea then if you were stuck on any parts of this question.